says the next two weeks is crucial in pinpointing the source of the bacteria. It's not yet known whether it's been contained or continues to spread. Health officials encourage anyone with symptoms to come forward. Jennifer Tryon, CTV News, Toronto. More warm weather coming up, I hope. That's right. Great day today. Good. Great day tomorrow. All we'll right. have more in your full forecast. Good evening, everybody. Taking a look at our weather almanac for today, Wednesday, January 23rd, 2002. No, uh, you don't need to clean your television screens. That does say 54 degrees. That was our high today. More than 20 degrees above our normal of 32, our low, very warm, 44. Today, across the state of Indiana, look at these temperatures, 49 up in South Bend. We saw 54 here in Muncie in the 8 o'clock hour. Evansville saw 62. Currently outside, mostly cloudy skies. Temperature is still very nice at 51 degrees. Humidity is at 96%. Very moist air for this time of the year. In our satellite picture, you see this trail of storms, uh, which brought severe weather to the south. Let's look at the radar picture. And here you can see those severe storms that came through Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas today. Very unusual for this time of the year. We don't usually see this uh, warm and moist air in such large quantities as we did today. And parts of those storms are coming up into our area. They won't be as severe, but they will move through as we move into tomorrow. As tonight moves on, those storms push to the east and north and will be dropping in our area. Our lows tonight, uh, the mid-30s, uh, possibly 40s for us here in Muncie. A light rain, 42 degrees will be our low. And for tomorrow morning, a chance of showers. Temperatures at 44 degrees. Uh, and as we look at our map for tomorrow, uh, toward the evening hours, those storms push further to the east and move out of our area. Tomorrow our highs will be in the 40 degrees. These above average temperatures continue. And in our three-day outlook, look at that. The temperatures just keep getting warmer and warmer. It's just unbelievable. Uh, it's a great day to be a weatherman, but I hate uh, to remind everyone, there's still two more months of winter. I can't two more believe months. It. <laughs> Are we in Indiana? <laughs> I'm seriously, because I know this does not seem right. Hey, don't complain about the 50s. Oh, well, oh, we're not. definitely not complaining. <laughs> Wait, thanks, in Nicholas. the 50s throughout the it's week. Great. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Hoosier hoop action tonight, and it's all good news. Margie, right? Well, really not a Hoosier hoop action, but some Cardinal hoop yeah, well, action. Well, we're in the Hoosier State. That's well, what true, I mean. True. I'm sorry. But um, Ball State taking on Western tonight. I will have, t we're going to toss it to Co Tom Kozrowski. Can the cards topple over Western? We'll see. Sports is next, live at the arena. Ball State men play tonight at Worthen Arena against Western Michigan. We're going to take it live out to Tom Kozrowski right now at the arena. Tom, what's going on out there? Hey, Margie, how you doing? You know, the Cards were looking for six in a row against a Western Michigan team that last year came into Worthen Arena at, uh, with a 1-12 record and upset the Cards 70-66. to But could things change tonight? Let's go ahead and take those highlights now, if we could. Please. I love cameras because I'm photogenic. Gotta love Crazy George in the house. Ball State looking for six in a row against Western. Early on, T to Lonnie with the flush. Cards up early, and they would keep it going. Then check out Petey Pav is in the house once again. Looking for a little room. Can't find it, so he just pops the tray. Hits. Cards up as many as five. But then Western would silence the Ball State crowd with a 14-4 run to go up by as many as five. A little bit later, that's exactly what the cards are down by five. T. Smith. Check out the move on Taylor, bro. The hoop, the harm, and the foul. He would miss the free throw, however. Cards down three. And then Petey coming with it again. Lonnie looking for some space. He can't find it gets the outlet to Jackson, who drains the tray again. That ties it at 25. And then Chris Williams just straight rolling at the end of the half. Goes on an 11-2 run by himself 
That's right, by himself. Cards go up 40-32, take it into the locker room at half. They go on to win the game 74-61. to And now I'm joined by Cardinal Patrick Jackson. And, PD, just talk a little bit about the win tonight. How much, how good, is it, how good does it feel for six in a row? Yeah, it feels really good. Um, we had a good Western Michigan team that came in here, and we just wanted to keep the momentum going. Came out and played a really good game, and, you know, we're still on top, so it feels good. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, just the game tonight in general um, with Western coming in. You know, they're always a tough team with you guys. They played you very well last year. Just talk a little bit about uh, coming in. Did you Were you guys a little worried that maybe they could upset you again? No, like you uh, had said earlier, they came in when they were 1-12 and, and beat us on our home floor, and, you know, we wanted to make sure that didn't happen again. And we came out with a lot of intensity. Chris led us offensively and defensively to a good start, and, you know, I think we capitalized on it and came out with the win. How much momentum does this guy give you guys now six in a row after the loss to Kent? Uh, how are you guys feeling? It feels pretty good. I mean, we have a, a tough Miami team that we got to go. They beat us nine straight times at Miami. We haven't got a win there since I've been here. So, you know, we're really going to go in there. Our confidence is high right now. We just want to, you know, go in there and play ball, State basketball, and see if we can come out with a win. All right, Petey, thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah, good, good luck on Saturday. Right. Once again, like Petey said, Ball State lost nine in a row to Miami. They take take them on Saturday night at, uh, in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Tom Kozrowski, live from Worthen Arena, New Center 43 Sports. Thanks a lot, Tom. But the Ball State women yesterday made a place for themselves last night in the record books. With the help of Tamara Bowie's 24 points, they set a school record for, a f for field goals made in a game with 41 against Akron. The 41 baskets surpassed the previous record of 40 set against Chicago State in 1978 and Illinois in 1981. The Lady Cardinals returned to action with play against conference leaders, beginning with a 2 p.m. contest at Western Michigan Saturday. The team then travels to Miami January 30th before returning home for a battle against Toledo on February 2nd. And it's not just a rumor anymore, the Colts have a new coach. The Indianapolis Colts introduced Tony Dungy as their head coach this evening, just like everyone thought. He'd be making, he'll be making $13 million from the team over the next five years. Dungy was fired just nine days ago by Tampa Bay, about the same time former coach Jim Mora was fired from the Colts. Dungy's contract also includes incentives if he takes the Colts to the playoffs and a Super Bowl win. The 46-year-old Dungy is the Colts' sixth coach in 11 seasons. And another fine today in the NFL, this time for a quarterback hit on Sunday. Philadelphia Eagles defensive end Hugh Douglas was fined 35 grand for the hit that knocked Bears quarterback Jim Miller out of last weekend's playoff game. He's planning to appeal the fine. Douglas's fine was his second in two weeks. He was fined $5,000 last week for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Tampa Bay quarterback Brad Johnson in the wild card game on January 12th. And on to golf, where a 17-year-old is making some history or maybe should be studying some history. Ty Tryon, a junior from Orlando, Florida, is now the youngest player to earn his PGA Tour playing card, allowing him to play in all tour events. This weekend marks his first tour event, although many people, including other tour members, are pretty skeptical. Tryon will set out to prove the skeptics wrong when he plays in the first round of the Phoenix Open tomorrow as the youngest pro golfer in history. And you know, That's pretty we've got some catching up yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Work. I, I think you need to get on that, Dustin. <laughs> Thanks. I'll work on it. Thanks, Mark. After the break, Nicholas Ferry will have a look at your final forecast. And I'm willing to bet some money you don't know what this sign is. A little street sign 101 coming up next. One last look at weather for tonight, light rain outside, a low of 42 degrees. For tomorrow, mostly cloudy skies, high of 46, another great day. Look forward to it. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, if you drive past the intersection of McKinley and Riverside Avenues, you might have noticed a traffic sign that I guarantee you're not used to seeing. Tonight, we can tell you why. The five-man electrical band said it all. Signs are everywhere. Their meaning clear as day. But what about this one? What's with the ring there? It's a circle. <laughs> no clue. Yeah, I have no clue. Okay. I don't even. I, I didn't even know there was a sign there, really, to tell you the truth. But yeah, now that I look at it, wait, there's one on it up there too, huh? Yeah, there is. About ten feet from the first sign, the same thing, huh? Hmm. Makes you think. <laughs> so what does this sign mean? Hula Hooper Crossing. Hula. 
Hi, this is Dustin Grove from New Center 43. I got a question for you. There's an orange diamond-shaped uh, traffic sign. Okay. Um, it's on the intersection of Riverside and McKinley. Uh, and it looks like the guy has a, well, it looks like a hula hoop around him and nobody seems to know what that is. Do you have? No. No idea? No, you know who I should call? Nobody seems to know. But walk down McKinley Avenue and get a closer look. I don't think that sign's real. I yeah. think there's a sticker on it. Yep, it's a prank. Well, somebody put it there, obviously. <laughs> and even though this sign isn't real, this girl says it still shows an important message. No hula hooping. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? And now you know. By the way, police say there are heavy consequences meaning hefty fines for altering traffic signs. So uh, those people got away with it, but police hope not many other people do. Wow. Right. Thanks for joining us at 930. I'm Dustin Grove. And I'm Casey Cabal at News Center 43. is an official CNN Student Bureau. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for News Center at 530. See you then. Good night.